Hey everyone and welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. My name is Noah and in today's Unity tutorial we will take a look at how to create a simple 2D melee combat system. By the end of the video your player character will be able to use his weapon to slash to pieces your game's various foes. Note that you'll be able to use the techniques showcased in this video to bring to life all kinds of weapons, from long-ranged spears to short swords. You'll have the possibility to tweak the weapon's area of effect, radius and shape, the amount of damage each attack deals, as well as how fast the player can swing his weapon. Just before starting, I wanted to give a big thanks to Wisp for supporting me and my content via Patreon. It's just so appreciated and helpful. With that said, I'll jump straight into Unity. So as you can see I have a simple scene set up with a player character that for now can move left and right and an enemy that moves left. I want to give my player the possibility to hurt this enemy with his sword. So I'll make a new C sharp script called player attack, drag and drop it onto my player and open it up. Now I don't want my player spam clicking space to attack but would rather he have to wait a few milliseconds between each attack. So I'll make a private float variable called time between attack and a public one called start time between attack. In my update function I'll make an if statement checking whether time between attack is less or equal to zero and if it is well then I can attack. I'll also make sure to set my time between attack value back to its default starting value. If however time between attack is not less or equal to zero then I'll gradually decrease that value using minus equals time dot delta time. With that done I'll code out the attack. So I'll make another if statement in here and check whether the player hits space. Obviously you can use whatever key or button you want for your attack. Once the player hits space to attack, I'm going to check for all the enemies inside a certain radius and deal them damage. Let's start by making a circular shaped area of effect. As seen in my video on 2D destructible terrain, we'll use the overlap circle all function. So I'll start by making a 2D collider array called enemies to damage and set it equal to physics 2D dot overlap circle. This function will basically cast an invisible circle at a certain position and with a certain radius and all enemies found inside it will be dealt damage. That's the plan anyway. So for the circle's position I'll make a public transform variable called attack pose and for the circle's range I'll make a new float variable called attack range. In my parentheses I'll then use those two newly created variables for the circle's position and range. For the third parameter of this function we can plug in a layer mask which is very useful and will allow the circle to ignore certain colliders found inside its radius such as the environment or friendly NPCs and of course focus only on colliders with the corresponding layer mask. So I'll make a public layer mask variable called what is enemy and place that right there. Now we can loop through all enemies found in the circle and deal each one a certain amount of damage. So let's make a for loop, double pressing tab to automatically generate the syntax for that loop and run this loop a number of times equal to the amount of enemies found in the circle. And now let's deal them damage. I'll make a public int variable called damage and then grab the enemy script components of my enemy character and reduce his health with damage. You could of course make a public function called take damage inside of your enemy script that takes in an ints variable called damage and reduces the health there without forgetting of course to call the take damage function inside of our loop and passing in damage between the parentheses. Before heading back into Unity to make sure that all this is working, I'll make a function called onDrawGizmosSelected. Now make sure you type this out exactly as I have done here or the function will never get called. Basically Unity will render out in the scene view a cool gizmo of a certain color and shape when we select our player character which is great to help ourselves and visualize the range and shape for our player's attack. So I'll just make the gizmo red and since our attack has a circular area of effect, I'll make sure to draw out a wireframe sphere with the attack pose position and the attack range for radius. Okay, heading back into Unity, I'll type out a value for my start time between attack. I'll just type in 0.3, meaning that the player can attack every 0.3 seconds. I'll then create a new empty game object called attack pose, parent it to my player and place it in front of 
of him. Of course, don't forget to drag and drop it inside of the corresponding empty slot in the inspector. Next up, I'll type out the attack range, and by doing so, you'll see that cool red gizmo in the scene view appear, clearly indicating to us the area of effect of the character's attack. I'll now make a new layer called enemy and set my enemy character to that layer. Of course, make sure your enemy has some 2D collider attached to it, or the attack's invisible circle won't detect anything. Lastly, crank up the damage value. And now I can hit play and my enemy will take damage. Except this is far from visible to the player. So let me head over to my enemy script and first things first, destroy him when he reaches zero health. I'll also make him spawn some cool blood particles whenever he is hit using the instantiate method. Of course, take your time on this. Try making the attack's impact the most juicy and satisfying as possible. I'll get my screen shaking a little whenever the player attacks, for example, as well as make him play an attack attack animation. You could also get the enemy playing a little hurt sound whenever he takes damage. I'll now drag and drop my particle effect prefab inside of that empty slot in the inspector and hit play. And things already feel a lot better. The enemy doesn't take any damage when out of my circle, but when I hit space to attack and my enemy is within reach, BAM! Blood spawns and my enemy takes a hit. You'll also notice that my enemy, when hit enough, is destroyed. Perfect. But still, things aren't completely right. I feel as if the enemy should get knocked back a little when hit, or just pause, dazed by the attack. So I'll make a private float variable in my enemy script called dazed time, and another public one, this time called start dazed time. If dazed time is less or equal to zero, then the enemy's speed is at its normal value of 5. If not, I'll set speed to 0 so that the enemy can move and gradually decrease dazed time. And so when the enemy takes damage, I'll set dazed time equal to start dazed time. This way, the enemy pauses a little with a speed of 0. And so back into Unity, I'll get the enemy dazed for about 0.6 seconds and testing this out in-game, things feel a lot better. The attack has more of an effect on the enemy who no longer feels like some unstoppable beast. Of course, you could knock back the enemy slightly instead of just making him pause. That's completely up to you. Now, of course, you may want your weapon's area of effect to be more square or rectangular. You can do so by simply changing the overlap circle all function into the overlap box all function. Again, you'll need to set the box's position and instead of a radius, define the box's scale for the X and Y coordinates. So I'll remove the attack radius variable and instead make a float variable called attack range x and another named attack range y. Then type new vector2 in here and plug in those two new variables. Note that you can also set the box's angle, which can be pretty useful, but I'll just leave that as zero for this simple demo. It's also a good idea to change the gizmo visual into a wire cube instead of a sphere. In Unity, I'll now play around with my attacks X and Y range, and you'll see the gizmo update itself inside the scene view. And there we go, you're now armed with a couple cool tools to make a fun melee combat game. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. It would be wonderful if you could hit the like and subscribe buttons, as well as considered supporting me financially via Patreon, like these top supporters. With that said, have a great day, thanks so much for watching, stay tuned, cheers!